Hi everyone. Welcome to our virtual story time here at Michigan City Public Library. My name is Mr. Dave and joining me today is Miss Dana. Hello, I'm Miss Dana. So before we start the stories today, I thought we could shake our hands up. Shake our hands up. Wiggle your fingers around. Shake them out to the side. Shake them out in front of you. Okay, is everybody ready? I have 10 little fingers and they all belong to me. I can make them do things. Would you like to see? I can shut them tight. I can open them wide. I can put them together. I can make them hide. I can make them fly high. I can make them fly low. I can fold them like this and hold them just so. Right, good job everybody. Gassy, a gosling on the go by Olivier Dunray with permission by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. This is Gassy. Gassy is a gosling. A small yellow gosling who likes to wear bright red boots every day. She wears them when she eats. She wears them when she sleeps. She wears them when she rides. She wears them when she hides. But what Gassy really loves is to wear her bright red boots when she goes for walks. Every day. She walks backward. She walks forward. She walks uphill. She walks downhill. She walks in the rain. She walks in the snow. Gassy loves to wear her bright red boots. Every day. One morning, Gassy could not find her bright red boots. She looked everywhere. Under the bed. Over the wall. In the barn. Under the hens. Gassy looked and looked for her bright red boots. They were gone. Gassy was heartbroken. <gasps> then she saw them. They were walking on someone else's feet. Great boots, said Gertie. Gassy smiled. Gassy is a gosling, a small yellow gosling who likes to wear bright red boots. Almost every day. Gassy, a gosling on the go. By Olivier Dunray. A Hat for Minerva Louise by Janet Morgan Stokey. Read with permission from Puffin Books. Minerva Louise loved snowy mornings. Her friends didn't like them one bit. They stayed inside all day with their heads tucked under their wings. Not Minerva Louise. She couldn't wait to go out exploring. Everything was so beautiful. She wanted to stay out all day, but it was too cold. If I had some warm things like you, she said, I could stay out and play. 
A scarf might help, but not this one. It's way too big. And these shoes are too big too. A hat, that's just what I need. But not this one. And not this one either. It's too heavy. There must be a hat around here somewhere. Minerva Louise looked outside. Everyone had on a fluffy white hat. Oh, your hat is wonderful. Where did you get it? Oh, look, what's over here? A hat, it's perfect. But what's this? Oh, it's two hats. Which was just fine with Minerva Louise. The end. A Hat for Minerva Louise by Janet Morgan Stokey. Goat's Coat by Tom Percival, illustrated by Christine Pym, with permission by Bloomsbury Children's Books. Let me tell you the tale of Alfonso the Goat, who was terribly proud of his lovely new coat. It had bright shiny buttons all made out of glass, and the collar the color of freshly cut grass. People turned to admire as Alfonso walked by. <gasps> what a marvelous coat, he heard someone sigh. Alfonso was happy. He pranced and he skipped. Then he heard a sad noise croaking out of a ditch. Wonder who it is. Deep down in the ditch was a family of frogs. They used to live there in a mossy old log. But the log wasn't there. It had rotted away. And the frogs from the log now had nowhere to stay. The frogs were distraught. Please help us, they cried. And Alfonso felt sorry for them, so he tried. He unpicked some stitches upon his new coat and, using the fabric, helped make them a boat. The frogs were delighted. He just made their day. Oh, thank you, they croaked as they all sailed away. Alfonso's new coat didn't look quite so smart, but he felt a warm glow in the depths of his heart. He clipped happily on till he came to a shed. The sound from within filled Alfonso with dread. What could possibly make such a sad sound as that? Alfonso peered in. Then he saw it. A cat! The cat was trembling and terribly pale. It was clear to see that she'd hurt her tail. Alfonso got busy and cleaned up the cut. Then, using his coat, he bandaged it up. The cat was so glad, so grateful and happy, but Alfonso's coat was now looking quite ratty. He clip-clapped along through the crisp winter's day. He was whistling a song when a hen came his way. The hen was upset. She'd lost one of her chicks. Could this be something Alfonso could fix? Together, the hen and Alfonso looked around. But the hen's little chick just couldn't be found. Then, somewhere up high, a voice cried, Help me! And there was the chick, stuck up in a tree. So Alfonso removed even more of his coat and tied it together to make a long rope. He gritted his teeth, then climbed up like a rocket. He came down again with the chick in his pocket. 
Alfonso's new coat was now looking a mess. Still, what's done is done. It was all for the best. As Alfonso walked on, there were more problems still. But he helped solve them all, with his coat and his skill. Alfonso's new coat was now just a few threads. But he thought of the good deeds that he'd done instead. The weather grew colder. Snow fell all around. Poor coatless Alfonso trudged back toward town. The blizzard grew worse. It got colder and colder. Alfonso took shelter behind a large boulder. Alfonso was freezing, and night would soon fall. And so he curled up in a cold little ball. But then he heard voices ring out through the night. Someone was shining around a bright light. Here came the frogs and the cat and the hen. He wasn't alone. He'd been found by his friends. Seeing them all made Alfonso feel better. And not only that, they had brought him a sweater. They had made it themselves from the things they could find. A gift to Alfonso for being so kind. And so our dear goat had made best friends forever. And he wore his new sweater, whatever the weather. Goat's Coat by Tom Percival Illustrated by Christine Pym Be sure to visit the library to pick up this week's take-home story time craft.